been looking out to the city. Wanna run my day, that's extra. I've been looking out to the city. Wanna run my day, that's extra. What's going on YouTube? How y'all doing today? Welcome back to another YouTube video. Before we get started, today we got Fatalis Guide and I'm gonna try to help best way I can with Fatalis and try to see what's the best method or, you know, just break down the whole fight. Probably like a whole blueprint to deal with Fatalis because I know a lot of bow users specifically struggle with him. So I'm gonna do my best to try to help anybody out there. If you knew, especially you're gonna get help by this. Doesn't really matter where you at. If you knew, um, probably some things in this video that you definitely wanna tune in because a lot of new people don't know how to fight Fatalis. But overall, I'm just help with the bow, specifically like move set, some tips you can do, uh, some good skills to have for Fatalis some good things that are around the map that are very good to use to help kill them some items that you need to bring make the run a lot smoother for everybody in your group some tips and tricks or things not to do if you're in a group just like pretty much everything that i think is necessary to know but without further ado let's get into the video and like i said before if this video helps you in any type of way make sure you subscribe and like for more content i speed run and do other gaming content on this channel and we are so close to 1000 subs i know we can reach it by the time this video come out hopefully i got it but i got a, a special treat for the bow users for the thousand subs so hopefully i get there pretty soon but yeah man let's get right into the video all right so to start off fatalis has sixty six thousand health um the average elder dragon on this game has around fifty thousand to around forty thousand health fatalis has the most health as far as i know on this game pretty much so um he has three phases in each phase i'll cover like the move sets you want to go into but ultimately all the move sets are kind of the same it really only changes for like third phase to be honest that's the only the phase that i really want to concentrate on it because that's where the phase where the most people die at so i will be concentrating on that elements he's weak to is uh dragon um and raw but raw is not really an element but uh also fire but nobody really uses fire on him so i would just say use dragon or raw element and raw is basically just raw attack power so anything that is extremely guided towards your attack power and not really elements or he has two stances that you mainly want to concentrate on and this is very important because i know a lot of new people don't understand this so the first stance is where he's just standing like how he is in the video that's playing right now where he's just on his back two feet and he's standing up and it's where he actually is on all four all four you can actually get a wall bang that's going to do the most damage if you wall bang him while he's standing on his back two feet it'll be significantly less damage if you wall bang him so i would wait till he's in uh standing on all fours to try to wall bang him on the wall so you can get the most damage both of the stances have a variety of moves but they're not really that different but i will cover them once i cover the move set uh, later in the video with all that being said let's talk about some skills that could potentially help you as a bow man and probably are the most important ones to me so let's go ahead and look at those skills right now Right, so first off we got the stamina skills and you need level three on stamina surge or constitution it's just a, a ground rule like your stamina is very important for this fight it's very aggressive and you're gonna have to get out the way a lot of times so you need your stamina especially stamina surge so it can just regenerate after you're done using i like stamina surge better than constitution personally but both of them are good i just prefer stamina surge but either one of these level three is fine both of them together cool next is evade window and please please put evade window on Put evade extender, uh, evade extender. You can have that level one, but evade, evade window. At least have level three. At least have level three. If you can't get level three, at least try to get it level two, or just have evade window on your class. A lot of people don't understand, but if you do not have this as a bow user, you are tripping. Like I'm telling you here right now, I play the bow all the time, and the number one thing I see people are fucking up on. A lot of people, a lot of bow players who do not use evade window. You have to be kidding me. This is a huge monster if you don't have this and you're getting hit by every attack that's why you're getting hit by every attack i promise you i'm going in such detail because this is very important skill like it's important more important than people realize because yes you have a bow and the only thing you have for defense is dodging and this is like the thing that helps you dodge so you got to understand where i'm coming from stun resistance is cool but not that important but it's definitely helpful for the whole class i hear a lot of people complain that they're not doing damage if you're not doing damage you got to look at your normal shot and your spread shot heavy artillery is 
probably one of the most important skills on this whole class because um if you didn't know uh it helps knock down fatalis um when you're using a roma ballista or you're using a cannon effect and i'm gonna show you the cannon method um in this video uh just in case you wanted to do that to just get the initial knockdown and take like 10 percent of his health away in the beginning for free from the cannons or you can do it from the roma ballistas but i'm gonna get into that later in the video it, it's very important because it gives you like free knockdowns on equipment that's already provided in the map so i'll show you how to use the equipment later in the video if you don't know clutch claw boost which is the shaver jewel and speed eating uh speed eating really isn't that important but it's really really good for beginners like especially if you need to eat something and you need to get your health back fast as possible clutch claw is important because you only have to tenderize once and we will be trying to tenderize the chest as a bow user because that's pretty much all where all your damage is going to come from. Uh, but now we got all that out the way. Let's start with the fight and try to talk about some methods and some plans to start the initial fight off with or what you should probably go for or look for in a fight. All right. So initially, when you start the fight, right? You got a whole bunch of ways to start this fight but this is the cannon method uh you can use this method um, as much as you want to so you just put a ghillie mantle on immediately before you come down don't put the ghillie mantle when you come down you gotta put it on before you come down and you can go to these cannons right here fill them up egg them right just to hit them right uh, it's gonna take some time it, your cat will even help you <laughs> refill the cannons i think that's kind of cute once you fill the cannons on you can angle them right just to hit them and i can't really tell you the angles but you can just kind of see what i'm doing and follow along but if you have heavy artillery like i was saying that's why this skill is so important because if you did this without heavy artillery nothing would happen uh, you would still do damage but you wouldn't get that knockdown that i'm finna get but um this is the counter method this is how a lot of people who struggle with fatality especially if you are uh, on a special assignment and you just need to get past the first stage to get help this is probably the biggest thing to help people just get past the first stage but this is a good starter if you just knew you're brand new you don't really know what to do it's a good way to start if you're not really that comfortable um i used to use this when i was very new to the fight and it helped a little bit until i got comfortable uh this method is so good it's because it gives you a freak knockdown and you can just tenderize his chest for free he's knocked down so you get all that damage for free now that's just that method but my method preferably i just go down and i automatically just clutch claw his chest and just tenderize it um if this is a little bit dangerous for you you can throw a a, a smoke bomb down to uh, have him confused while you tenderize his chest but getting that initial tenderize to the chest is, is mainly what our bow users are going to go for trust me especially if you got clutch claw and shaver jewel it's just best man it's just it'll, it'll just equal to more damage because you tenderize the chest and, and like i said before you scared just throw that smoke bomb down and you should be uh cool just wait till he chill out um and speaking of smoke bomb i'm just get this out the way right now i'm gonna just have a whole little discussion on this because this needs to be said to uh, beginner players as well my new people my new beginners I, I got this clip from playing with a group of people i wanted to test this out so i had the ghillie metal on i threw the smoke down to see if my teammate would come he came because he's smart so when somebody throws a smoke down on your team it's to get fatalis out of the air quicker and if you didn't know smoke bombs get him out of the air quick yeah this is how you make smoke bombs please bring smoke bombs with you they help the team out and get fatalis out the air and i say this with a whole bunch of love because a lot of people don't understand this even if you don't have smokes just get under the smoke because i guarantee you somebody on your team has it but a lot of people know this already i'm just saying this for the people who don't know but uh yeah let's move on like i was telling you before uh, with the wall bang so if you wall bang him initially um when he's on all four you'll get way more damage so in this clip i just tried to show you that um and also if you tenderize his chest right initially and you're getting you're getting comfortable with this fight because you can see it doesn't really take that much to knock him down i think you just need to hit about like a couple shots to his chest to get him knocked down and initially when you knock him down right he, you see how fast he got knocked down and then once he gets knocked down this is like a free wall bang if you didn't know like you should do this this every time because every time is going to work out rarely do you ever get hit doing it but boom look how much damage i did and now i'm going to show you another clip where i'm wall banged him when i actually he was standing up so just look at the difference on the damage versus when i do the wall bang when he's standing up versus when he's uh on all fours and as you can see it's way less damage so 
unless you're trying to get him agitated fast which a lot of new people probably aren't doing because they're not going for that specifically um actually if you didn't see the number it was 264 but just um just knock him when he's on all fours it's better just to knock him now that that's out the way let's just move on to something else. so when he's agitated and he does that one move where he holds the fireball if he's non-agitated he's just going to stand still he's not going to fly in the air but on the other hand if he's agitated he's actually going to fly so when he's agitated he's going to fly if not agitated he's not going to fly and the third phase is actually swapped around so that's how they kind of mesh with your mind a little bit but yeah very important information to know for some reason every beginner knows this but if you don't notice after you tenderize fatalities you can actually pick up dragon pods and if you throw two of them at him you can flinch shot him out of whatever move he's doing now this is a good tool to save your teammates and to overall you know you know kind of just get the big up on them but uh, beginners misuse it a lot um if you're playing with a great sword user or a long sword user or somebody who needs to have him at a precise area in a precise situation to be able to get damage on him you're kind of being a nuisance and this is actually a meme that's going around monster in the world so don't be that dude like it's a it's a good tool to save your teammates now and then and use to like you if you know somebody's finna die or you know that this move has the potential to stop and kill my teammates then you can pick up the dragon pods and then you know say your teammates but does just, just don't be spamming it just for the sake of like oh it looks cool and i think it's helping because the majority of the time it's not helping everybody especially if you're playing with people who know what they're doing um most of the time they won't even tell you to stop they just will get annoyed so don't be this dude only use it in the right situations do not be that guy please do not be that guy but it does help sometimes Alright, so first we got the snake bite and a lot of people, you know, don't know how to punish this move. But I kind of wait a second. I kind of run or I kind of run to the opposite side that he's going to like do the bite on. And actually, I fake him out at the last moment. So I wait about two seconds. So right after I dodge, right? I went into a charge shot, another charge shot, into another charge shot. So three charge shots into a spread shot to end it. And that's pretty good damage. Like, so only have to dodge if you're all outside of his perimeter. So if you're under him, like directly under his belly, you don't have to dodge at all. So if you're like directly under his neck or like belly area, you don't have to dodge this at all. You can just go straight into your combo and do the full damage. This is only if you're like outside of or like outside of the parameters to uh, get hit by this move you're gonna notice a lot of the time during this fight you really need to stay close to him as possible there's only a few moves that are dangerous to stay close but it would be way better to stay close to him um rather than being far away with this bow uh the next move is the hiccup flamethrower um you will get hit by the initial hiccup if you're right in front of it so try to dodge it and if you're far away from him you can off frame the flame to kind of dodge it but it's very hard so I would, that's why I'm saying always stay close to him because if you're far away with this move, you're going to have to either dolphin dive or you're going to get hit by it. Yeah, just stay close to him so you can punish this move especially because it's very good. And you can get about, you can get one full combo and one and a half combo. Like you can definitely do good damage. So look out for that move. Uh, the next move is the cone move where he gets on all fours and does the flamethrower. Uh, I kind of bait. People usually bait this move by just staying stagnant after an attack and trying to bait it out. I kind of do that with him too as well. It's kind of risky with Bo, but it, it's, it's definitely useful to do it as well. But um, if you didn't know, these monsters know what you're doing. Like they know how much effort and how much aggro that you're doing on each move. So if you do a move and you commit to that move too much, the monster knows that you committed too much. It's not like, you know, most of the game is RNG, but most of the time, especially if like you've been playing for a long time they're pro they're going to definitely punish you so act accordingly um the good thing about this is that you can use that as bait to bait them you know so if you do a move and you commit because you know he's going to do a certain move after you commit then that you know it's very good to bait monsters out like that but if you don't know what i'm talking about don't worry about it but if you do like yes they they know what you're doing and they're going they're going to punish you so you can use that to your advantage sometimes or or not you know or just play it safe and just punish accordingly but it's whatever you want to do i don't really know what to call this move but um when he goes side to side with the flamethrowers this is like your bread and butter you can get like a charge shot and a spread shot two of those directly into him if you uh time it properly but if you already know it's coming uh, it's pretty easy and uh one thing about this move never get caught on the side because you will get um tilted every single time you will get caught every single time so if you're ever on the side of him when he does his move make sure that you get either behind him or that you get in the safe zone the safe zone is pretty much in between his stomach 
or close to his stomach but don't get caught on the side when he does that move but this move is very good and, and it leaves a lot of room for punishment uh you can just go into a dash shot into a spread shot two times or you can do a full combo and then probably do a uh, dash shot to a charge shot. The next move is like a straight line flamethrower where he just puts a, a flamethrower in a straight line. And this move is really good because you can get you can get a dash shot into a charge shot into a spread shot. You can and that's guaranteed every time if you catch it on time. If you catch it a little bit late, you could probably get like a dash shot to a spread shot. But if you catch it right on time, you can go to a dash shot, right? Like I did, and then go to another charge shot and then end it with a spread shot. And you can do that every time on every time. It doesn't even matter matter what phase he is because sometimes he does moves a little quicker in the third phase but this is guaranteed punish every time all right so the next move is when he throws out three fireballs and you can punish this accordingly uh, if you catch it at the right time you can go into a dash shot into a spread shot at least three times if you catch it at the right time uh, this is one of my favorite moves a lot of fatalis is really actually not that hard of a monster he has a lot of openings like i don't know how many moves i went over so far but he has a lot of openings you just have to know you can't let your fear dictate like how much damage you do because it's going to prevent you from getting better and learning the moves so if you're scared of any one of these moves you gotta go you gotta go in there and practice like that's really the best way to get better with these i can tell you this all the day long and tell you how to punish but you have to like put it to work and like just because it isn't working the first time doesn't mean that you should just quit like you gotta put in work especially with this monster once you get it you're gonna be like oh my god like you're gonna it's, it's gonna be exciting so just stick to it but that's probably one of the best moves on here so far uh now i'm gonna move on to the second phase though and i'm gonna talk about like the binders and the roma ballista just stuff i think you should know so let's move on right now let's go so once you get to the second phase you're gonna have access to two binders the first binder is right behind you after um the first stage or the first five initial fires like directly behind you you cannot miss it um i pointed out in the video there's actually two binders most people don't think that it's two only uh, i only see people grab one all the time people don't notice two but it's actually coming handy so this is like a lot of free damage from these two binders um if you didn't know for the longest time and the other one is like right by the um stairs or like the broken wall kind of area i don't really know how to explain it but you can see in the video it's like right behind me um it's fatalis is trying to kill me but it's right here um but these two binders are very important especially for the third phase or the second but yeah a lot of damage a lot of free damage now let's talk about the roman ballista uh, like i was saying earlier i would personally throw a smoke down every time you're gonna do this but the roman ballista if you have heavy artillery this will definitely get you a free knockdown on the second or the third stage and this is a good damage dealer especially for me since i'm using the bow i just had to get that out the way those are like the only two things i wanted to cover um because the move sets are kind of the same for first phase in the second phase they really don't change until third that i'm gonna get into the third phase in this hardest moves now so yeah let's let's go ahead and move on to that right now all right so well, i'm gonna just start off with the worst ones possible so i'm gonna start off with the line of fire now when he does a line of fire he does it very quickly in the third phase but do not let that throw you off your game just wait and react to it and the key to dealing with the line of fire is it's, it's fast in the third phase right but he puts it where you was last at so you have to react to it if you see it coming don't instantly move because he's going to put the fire where you was just at and if you're trying to anticipate it before it even comes out it's going to hit you because it's going to land wherever your feet was just at like, and, and, and this catches a lot of people because you're already scared as because it's <laughs> it's the third phase right but you have to calm down and if all fails you can um you can iframe the fire but you have to be really good to do that but just calm the hell down it's okay like it's it is scary the third phase even at this level sometimes i still am scared but it's really just a mind game just don't get caught by that line of fire even though it's fast as hell you you can dodge it bro just don't anticipate it too early just wait and you know, just react accordingly i wanted to take an opportunity to just um, tell you about this because he does this a lot to try to trap you and he does uh trap a lot of people with this so like when he throws a fire on the ground specifically for the third phase it stays on the ground like a little bit longer than it is regularly and it's obviously going to do more damage to you 
but he's just trying to trap you and even if he does this in like the second phase um it's really just to trap you you see i i framed the fire because i timed it i didn't i didn't react how he wanted me to i dodged right in time and if i didn't you know the attack would have caught me so most of this is really just testing how how composed you can stay in certain situations that's why i like the bow especially because it's like it's it's mind boggling to like stay calm in some of these situations but some of these situations you have to stay calm if you freak out you're gonna die because what are you doing when you freaking out you just want to survive you're not thinking like it's just it's just like in real life like you don't want to be in survival mode it's just like you have to think clearly and it's hard but you gotta remember it is just a game so you can try again you just don't want to try again because it's a lot of work but it is what it is now this move right here oh my god this be killing everybody look if he is like if you go under his stomach the uh, the side of his stomach where he is not pointing his head and just stay directly under it for the 360 in the third phase for fatalist monster on the world you will not die and this is actually sounds crazy but once you get used to it and once you get used to dodging this you have to like you're going to get excited when he does this because this is free damage like you can get some you can get like a full combo with the bow you can get a dash shot and a spread shot with this move this move is really good once you learn how to dodge it if you're too far away dolphin dive for your life or try to out frame the fire don't do that unless you are in flow state but just you know if you're too far away all right cool um just dolphin dive get out the way if you're right up next close to him and he does this there is no reason that you should die in the worst case scenario you can even clutch claw him in certain scenarios but you don't even have to do that you can honestly just stay you have to stay on the side or he's not pointing it that's what i'm saying in the last clip i said don't freak out do not freak if you freak out you're dead you're, you're gonna die like you're you're going to die you this is a essential that you stay calm as possible for this 360 move you have to stay on the side of him that isn't pointing the fire towards you and if you're if you're at the point where you like if it's too late you have to dolphin dive or do something else man but that's what i'm saying even if you stay close to him you can still roll in time and you can you can position yourself to be on the right side of him this this is like the what this move is single-handedly the worst move that i've seen that is messing up new players especially it's just like it, you think it's hard because he's going in a 360 but once you find out you can just like hide on his stomach then it's like it's no big deal but you gotta yeah it just comes with practice but that that's how you get past it you can clutch claw him too and i frame like i said but i wouldn't recommend it just stay on the side of his stomach that isn't pointing towards the fire and you should be golden all right this next move you should just stand right in the middle of him when he does the two linear fires in the third stage because this kills a lot of people too if you're in a bad position and you're behind him i would just stand in the middle of his tail do not be on the, the linear side of any of those those fires because they're going to touch you so try to stay in the middle of these and if you stay in the middle this is actually a pretty good punishment i was going to put this in this like one of the best moves it's probably one of the best moves in third phase to punish him but it gives people a lot of anxiety because it will kill you if it even touches you which all of his moves were will but this one is has a higher chance because it can catch you in a bad position but don't let it scare you it's just really not that bad once you once you know how to do it but make sure you stay right in the middle just imagine like what i do is i just imagine like i'm bowling you, you know you try to get a strike just stay right in the middle literally just aim right for the middle spread shot or charge shot to spread shot at least two times or get the job done but don't push it on this one don't definitely don't be too greedy on this move just try to get whatever you can and you know just wait for the next move i do have a video on how to break his head with the bow so just in case you was wondering about that i'll try to add it at a card or just put it down in the description if you're interested about that because you can't break his head with the bow but usually people don't do that with the bow they try to just kill him you know you can have the best of both worlds i got all the information you need for that but let's move on to the next thing all right this is like the last move that i'm probably going to cover in this but when he does that hard swipe like he puts his all into the swipe just dodge it accordingly like just time it it's kind of got a like a late timing to it so if you time it right you'll be good but this move is a very good punish because you can go into a dash shot right another charge shot and it with a spread shot that's guaranteed every time so if you play tekken or any other game it's like a guarantee like that's if he does that move and you dodge it bro you have you have to do that that's like guaranteed 
every single time like i i love when he actually does that move and it like it kind of flows into another move because he goes right into a, like another easy move right after that or he tries to hit you with it again and it's just like easy damage so definitely look out for that move and punish it accordingly um that's like one of his easiest punish moves but i wanted to save this for the third phase but he does that in like the first second and third i just i just forgot to um mention it better late than never my bad you know it is what it is but I think that's all this key moves that I really was trying to concentrate on. If you got any uh, comments about any of these moves or you feel like a way to get avoid or get past them, just message me on my Discord. Join my Discord and just message me on there. It's a lot easier. I, I can I have more resources to tell you and more pictures to show you in Discord. Yeah, but um, other than that, I think I'm done with the moves. Now I'm just going to get into conclusions and like a few tips that you may not know about this fight and just in general that might help you. And yeah, man, we, we just going to wrap this video up very long video but it, this was needed for somebody i know this is gonna help somebody so i wanted to make it this long but yeah let's move on to the conclusion man all right so my final tip is you can put fatalis to sleep before you put the dragonator on him and it'll actually double the damage of the dragonator and this is not only for fatalis this is for any monster that is asleep and you uh put a fallen boulder on him or a dragonator anything that actually gives you extra damage that's from the environment it'll actually double the damage so if you put any monster to sleep and hit him with a rock or do anything it'll actually double the damage the next thing i wanted to say is uh the roman ballista actually you can aim it for his head actually do extra damage to his head you probably get the initial break on his head if you just aim the ballista especially if you got heavy artillery do a lot of damage to his head and another thing too that uh that little rock right there that's in the middle of the map if he does the flamethrower and you're in a really bad spot you can hide behind it and you'll be safe from the flamethrower a lot of people don't know that either another thing too is a lot of people don't know that if you break his head twice you can actually withstand um when he does the flamethrower um if you take a max pill or a max potion when your health is damn near like 25 percent or like 45 percent you take it just in time you can withstand the flame because it does way less damage to you if you break his head twice that's how great sword users and long sword users just be staying in the fire for the longest time me myself was like trying to figure out how they did this but all they do is if you break the head twice you can withstand the fire and anybody can do this like any weapon can do this as long as you break his head but yeah that's that's actually like a pretty good tip and it's really special for uh great sword users especially all right man i'm gonna wrap the video right here man i appreciate all the love that y'all been showing me man it's so dope just to see like you know me build like a little community um yeah man it's really it's really a big deal it means a lot to me and like that's why i try to put a lot of effort in these videos even if you do and you're your first time watching me like man i was just like you watching this like videos like this and trying to get help but i tried to put like every like all of these tips especially like the hidden tips i did not know for the longest time so hopefully this helped you um like i said even if you need help with one specific move that i didn't cover join my discord and ask me directly or you can just ask the general chat whatever uh, and don't worry our discord is not toxic i will ban anybody being causing drama we don't do that and it's a safe place to just chill and if you want to ask a question somebody most likely will answer you but yeah i try to make it as positive as i can because i'm not I, I i cannot stand people who bring negative and, and drama and all that so we're not here for that we're just trying to help hunters and you know grow as a community but like I said, man, I'm really appreciative of all the people who show in love. Hopefully, this helps you in, a, uh, in the slightest bit. I try to make this as best way I could. Um, you know, I pr probably could make it better, but I'm not trying to spend like a week on this video. Uh, this already took like a couple days already just because I'm busy and doing other things. But I, wanted, I still wanted to bring this content to you guys. So I hope this really helps somebody. And keep using the bow, man. Like I said, a lot of people get discouraged. And a lot of people message me like I'm not doing damage or like look man this is this is a, this is not an easy life like a lot of people don't play the bow and the main weapon that people use on this game is long sword great like great sword like people barely use bows bro and it's a reason for that it's, it's extremely hard weapon to, to adapt to um some people say it hurts their fingers some people says this the aiming system is bad look if you want a reason to stop playing with it you'll find a thousand but if you actually love the weapon then none of them reasons even matter so if you really truly love the bow just keep playing it naturally you'll get better like in anything in life 
Um, I say that just to encourage people because I know a lot of people get discouraged <laughs> in my Discord. And they be like, you know, they be complaining. It's funny. But at the end of the day, you just got to keep playing it. I used to get like messed up all the I used to get messed up by monsters all the time. But look where I'm at now. Honestly, it was good like two years ago. I just never took content serious. Like I said, I'm yapping. I'm rambling on. But good luck with the bow, man. Good luck with Fatalis. And uh, yeah, man, I got this content for y'all. Once I hit a thousand subs, I got a special for y'all for the advanced bow people. And yeah, man, I'm going to keep working and keep showing uh, you know the best content i can out there i do speed run and, and do other gaming content on this channel so if you like the content stick around if you don't i hope you have a good day and you enjoyed the video man i'm out peace <laughs>